Okay, Zellas has been properly written to my Xbox 360. It's time to do a power cycle, um, which basically means you're going to pull the power plug out of the system, count to 30 seconds, and it really does matter you give it time, maybe 15 to 30, uh, to drain the SMC from RAM so it will accept the new one. Uh, plug in your power, uh, plug in your Ethernet since we'll be FTPing to it. Um, Zellas does not work with HDMI, so you'll need to be use composite or component cables. Um, make sure the Ethernet is attached to a router that your computer is also attached to since we'll be FTPing in. Um, I'm going to go um, Zellas boots through the eject button, um, not the power button. I mean, generally power button goes to NXE, but right now it won't work at this point. I'm going to transfer to uh, the camera. All right, I've got my Xbox 360 here. It's had Zellas put on it. It's um, time to start up the system. Got an orange power light, got Ethernet plugged in the back. Right, let's turn it on with the uh, eject button. Alright, tray should pop out. Zelda should show up on here. Alright, good, we got code. So you'll see here these are the few sets, these are the CPU key. It's gonna run through its thing. It's actually checking for um, disks and checking for USB sticks and all that stuff. Alright, um, Right now it's going to try to host a web page and it has. You see that, uh, yeah, my camera isn't focusing, it's HTTP D listen. Um, that, that's zealous. If there's no D at the end, it's just zeal on there. So my IP address is uh, 10.0.0.22. And um, on two lines up, it says my CPU key. So we will, um, we're actually going to log in zealous on the computer and we'll take it from there. Okay, so Zealous is currently running an FTP server on, on the television, and we're going to be FTPing into it uh, through Firefox. It has a really nice page that it's hosting that will let us download everything from a raw dump to decrypted key vaults, which you can use for some different things, um, mainly if you need to do a manual build to freeboot. Uh, it also, most importantly, it's going to give a give us our fuses, which is essentially a CPU encryption key that you have to have for anything to work on your 360. Um, so I'm going to be typing in uh, the URL which it gave me. It was 10.0.0.22. Let me open up Firefox here. HTTP slash slash 10.0.0.22. Alright, great. So this is the Zealous interface. It shows my CPU key. Normally you shouldn't really show this off, but this one doesn't matter since it's been banned. Like I, I wanted it to be, it was a cheaper system that way. Um, on these, on the right we have all these download links. You should just run through and get everything. Um, yeah, so right here are our fuses. Uh, this is a, a text file, so I'll just save that. Save that. Good. Get a, saved it to my desktop. Yeah, All right, I'm gonna make a folder here called Zealous Backups. Yeah, backups. And I'm just gonna copy all these files into here. So there are the fuses. I'll open this up. So um, this is your CPU key. This is what you have to have. Your DVD key is locked to your CPU key in case you need to swap drives or something. Okay, I'm gonna download my raw flash as well. Um, th this is just an entire dump. We know this has Zealous on it working in case we need to put this back on. Uh, key Vault, this is the decrypted one. Um, key, this is the encrypted one, meaning it's raw, it's straight from the from the NAND, and your configuration blocks, which, I mean, it basically holds some data on your computer. The most important of which is your, the MAC address of your Ethernet card. So let's just copy these over to the backup folder. And... Okay, so I'm going to take my CPU key and I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hit Control C, and it's time to open up Freeboot Toolbox Maker, which is um, the tool that we will be using to build our Freeboot. It it's pretty simple. It just asks you for a CPU key. Okay, so I'm going to drag Freeboot Toolbox Maker into here. I'm going to run it. It'll ask me for a CPU key. 
Um, and it basically automatically compiles everything for you, just that one number. Um, yeah, that key's banned too. <laughs> um, click update flash dot bin, since that's what Zealous will be recognizing. As far as just create a custom freeboot, um, you'll use that if you're kind of building a an orthodox box, like a Zephyr that's a 4580, you, you would check Falcon. Or if you're building a Jasper with a 256 or 512 NAND, you'd, you'd do a custom as well. You just have to manually pick it. So we've got the key. We're just going to have it auto detect since I have a 16 megabyte flash. And I'll just, um, yeah, I'll just click uh, generate. For, it's asking me to find my original dot bin, just the virgin NAND. You can actually use an XP reboot or, or an older freeboot file if you need to. Uh, they all work. So 1903, yeah, that's perfect. That's my CV. It's great. Okay, it's going to start making this file. I'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, great. Freeboot has finished making my new image. I'll just close this. It's been put into the dump directory, which um, I've got a, uh, yeah, it's in NAND Pro since that's where the original dot bin is from. So that should be at the bottom, upd flash dot bin. Great. I'll copy that, and I'm going to go into, I have, I have a USB external, um, this is the thumb drive. Just copy paste that in there. Okay, great. Well, it's time to go to Zealous and flash this thing. Awesome. Okay, it's time to flash on Freeboot. Zealous is running. We're done with the web page. I'm going to flick it off right now. I've got a USB stick that has UPD flash .bin in the root directory of it. It's in there. So now I simply turn it on again, and this time Zealous will automatically find the file and overwrite the flash itself. The reason we're doing it with this USB thumbstick method is it is very, very fast. If your LPT takes 20 minutes or an hour, well now it's going to take two minutes. So it says it found the update, press power now, it gives you a 15 second timer to wait out, um, and then it's going to start uploading the uh, image into RAM, which it's doing right now. Generally this takes about anywhere from about 45 seconds or so. Okay, great. It's finished loading it into RAM. It's writing the blocks. You may notice that number is moving very quickly, which is great news for us. It saves us so much time. Now, on top of that, Zealous, um, if you got errors like 250s and bad blocks, Zealous will automatically patch them, or at least most of the time it patches them. Okay, so the update's done. I'm going to pull off the thumb drive and turn off the system. And I'm going to do a power cycle. So I'm going to count to 30. Okay, power cycle has been finished. I'm going to plug this back in. Let's turn on our system and hopefully, with the power button, and hopefully Freeboot will load. If it gives me a speed spinning ring, we're in business. One, two, three, four. All right. Freeboot's on there. Let me uh, get a controller and sync it to the system. Alright, great. Just go through this stuff. Oops. Okay, just squeeze through that. Okay, I'm going to go to uh, my Xbox, system settings, console settings, at the bottom, 91.99. All right, time to go actually do something with this reboot. At this point, we're going to try to get XEX menu saved to the attached hard drive on the 360. I've just taken a blank one that I formatted and put it right on the side here. I burnt an ISO of XEX menu, the one that um, we got off XPIN. I'll just close that drive. The system should detect the disk and just auto boot it, or if it doesn't, just quick play game. 
should just take a couple seconds. Great. It's going to start off all um, XCX menu, its main advantage right now is we can use it as a file browser. Oh, um, hitting the left bumper or the uh, the right bumper will navigate through the pane. So clicking left, this is the file browser. If you hit X, uh, it brings up. Oops. You hit X, it brings up the different drives you can have. HDD1 is the main content drive. Um, AFDDX is your partition to your compatibility folder or your compatibility partition. DV is what it says, and Flash is your NAND. So don't mess with the Flash for now, unless you know what you're doing. So for HDD1 content, um, actually we want to go to DVD because that's what we're currently booting off of. You'll see that there's a folder that says code 999. Click Y and up will come the option to copy, which I hit A on. Now I'm going to change my directory to HDD1 and there is a, uh, we're going to go to content and actually there is nothing in here right now. I'm going to make a new folder called, uh, well, it's 16 zeros in a row. <laughs> um, just a sec. Zero 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 twelve C one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen. Okay, great. This is the general folder. Let me make sure that's fourteen. What is he for? Yeah, it's sixteen. Okay, great. Um, that's the general folder. You see the ones that have E in them? Those are your actual profiles. So we'll just go in here. No, the thing is, this is a brand new hard drive. So there's if you play a game and it downloads anything to the system, it'll automatically make this zero folder for you. However, this drive is brand new. So open that, hit Y, and paste it in there. And it's going to run up its little file copier and it'll run through its thing. It's kind of slow, but it's because of DVD. This way, whenever we want to run XEX menu, we won't have to keep putting in a disk, we can just load it straight from game library once it's copied on here. So, um, it's almost done. Alright. That's solid. So I'm going to hit the Xbox guide button and click uh, Xbox dashboard to go back so it'll refresh everything. And in game library you should now have XCX menu. Awesome. This is loading without the disk. I'm just going to take it out. So, let's get that up. Play a game. And it'll have, it should have an IP address on here somewhere. There we go. 10.0.0.22. So, XDX menu is setting up an FTP server that we're going to access next.